It's literally 11 o'clock at night, the last day of New York Comic Con. I leave for training camp in the morning. I started my packing three hours ago. And I wanted to get this video out there before it's too late. And then I get to go to training camp and get back to work on that. Let's go. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Life of Cletus. Today, I am going to go over my Funko Pop haul for New York Comic Con. It has been a crazy but successful New York Comic Con. It's been definitely a uh, most interesting and I learned so much about the company, the figurines, the community, um, the booths, the individuals who run and operate this entire thing. I talked to Toy Tokyo's owner. He was awesome. Fugitive Toys, Bait, the over 9,000 booth, Toy Tastic, Plastic Empire, Chrono and Callus Collectibles all did their whole thing. It was sick. I seen Brian Mariotti there busting his butt, basically the floor manager, keeping a tight shift. Everybody was working hard. Nobody was doing nothing outside the lines, and it was a great way to see a uh, company run. Hats off to him and that entire Funko team. They bust their butt all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom, every single employee on there. <laughs> shout out to all them. Shout out to all the employees and all the booths. The only one I didn't get to talk to was Undiscalable Realm, and it was actually one that I actually had really no interest in because they have so many pops. It's way overpriced, and I don't know if it's just for show or if they're trying to sell it, but it's crazy. I did see a $15,000 clock worth orange at Fugitive Toys. Last time I saw them, they had a $5,000 Dumbo for sale, and they sold it. So, But I'm not here to give you guys my review of the con just yet. I'm here to just show you the Funko Pops that I was able to get for New York Comic Con right now. Let's go. All right, starting out this pretty quick. We're gonna do everything but Funko Pops real quick. And the first one is the cereal from Scott Pilgrim. Got a little puzzle on the back. It is a multi-grain cereal. I am a gluten-free individual, but uh, we were able to get a, my first cereal. And it has a pint size here on it. Pretty cool. Funko is very smart on how do you make sure you kind of get a little bit of everything. We were able to get the Pocahontas. Rock Candy, New York Comic Con exclusive from the con itself. Uh, this was the Pocahontas figure from the Wreck-It Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, definitely going out of the box, definitely with Punky. And something that they've done for the first time this time around is they made the Royal Tenenbaums as a Rock Candy instead of a vinyl figure because I usually get these for the Royal Tenenbaums for Andy uh, the producer and the creator of that movie that I'm supposed to be in, um, which is coming out pretty soon, and they just started an Instagram just recently, and they're going to be shooting some stuff uh, on there. Pretty good. HBO and a few other still uh, companies have interest in it. So those were the rock candies. The only dorb we got was the Iron Heart Marvel dorb. This was the only dorb that they had at the con, and it has that New York Comic Con uh, limited edition sticker on there. It is cute. I don't really know too much about the Iron Heart character. Must be from the comic books. But I was able to pick this up. Most likely this one here is actually going to go to uh, RJ. That's probably going to go to RJ. Five stars. These things are pretty awesome. My first time actually getting them in hand and checking them out. You can see the box out in the front. They just open up like a book. They come with accessories. I did take the Harley Quinn out and checked it out and they hold the weapons perfectly, um, or the accessories you can call it. She comes with like a gun that has like cork on it, and she has the mallet. She's pink and white, pretty cute and awesome. My only complaint that I have so far with this is when you take them out of the box, uh, especially the accessories, you can't get them back in without like redoing the um, little uh, tie that keeps them in place, and that was the only down flaw 
of the whole entire thing. And then the other one we have is the gold Batman. You can see they'll get bat signal and you can see that little Batarang, I guess they call it. And on the side, you can see the five star and the collectible uh, items on the back. And I thought these guys were pretty awesome. This is definitely a Dorbs killer. And just so you can see, it's just a little bit bigger than the Dorbs. Almost the same exact height. Yeah. Next. The Marriage with Children Hollywood theme reaction figures. You got all four characters with Bud, Kelly, Peggy, and Al. New York Comic Con Limited Edition. Uh, is that sticker a little different? It is different. This sticker is red here, if you can see that. It's a red sticker compared to a blue one that's on this one. Notice these little details as I go. Wonder, wonder what that is. Pretty interesting, pretty cool. Yeah. Seeing these things, someone was selling for like, at the con for like $75. I was like, what the hell? Definitely, uh, definitely, this is some shelfware right here. This might be some shelf thing, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to pop on there. We'll see, we'll see. All right, we grabbed some vinyls. Uh, my whole thing at the cons is I always like grabbing one of each. Um, I'm gonna go with this one first. This is the Huckleberry Hound and the Snaggle Plus uh, figures. Vinyls, there's no eye because they're two of them. I don't know the actual saying of it, but you got two of them here, pretty cool. I do like the vinyl figures. I have been collecting a few of these now, especially from the cons themselves. Next up, we have the Rushmore vinyls. We have Max Fisher and uh, and Herman Blum. Uh, you can see that Herman got a little black eye in the back, same thing. Loving them. I like the two pack, and the pricing on these aren't too bad if you because you're getting two figurines. And the next one we have are the Coming to America Randy Watson and Prince Akeem. I think this is the first vinyl they have together with Coming to America. Definitely an upcoming line I can see taking off in, in the future. And in the back here, you can see that there's a bunch of little cities in the back. Definitely represents the uh, movie. Do love it. And on the bottom here, it actually has the Paramount um, logo on it, Paramount Pictures trademark. And the last one, and my favorite one, that I was able to add was the Gizmo one. This was definitely an epic one. I can definitely see him doing two pack of this down the line as a pop form. It's awesome. They got the height for it great too. You can see uh, Gizmo and the Gremlin. He's definitely a little taller, definitely a little lighter. They could have even went with the glow in the dark effect on the glasses. I do like this very much. Um, a lot. Definitely the best one. This is definitely the best one. So that was all of the non Funko Pop related items. Let's get into some of the Funko Pops right now because I don't know if I told you, but it's going to be a pretty long video. Next up, we have the Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Each and every con, we always get our Scott Pilgrim Pops. Not seen the film yet, but we were able to pick them up. Uh, this is the Twins. Pretty cool. Definitely probably have the entire series now because I always get the uh, con exclusives. Uh, and then the other one is the Sheer Khan. I thought this was a common. I really thought this was the common exclusive. And then I just realized that this is the exclusive because of his arms. Because on the back here, his arms are laid flat. This one is up. His arms are up. For New York Comic Con, I think they should have went with a flocked version of him. This is my first tailspin though. I am definitely want to get the other characters in this line, uh, for sure. I did miss out on the, the blue and those other target drops, but I'm not too worried about it. Anything, I'll just catch it up on a, a trade or, or something down the road. Not too worried at all, but I would have really liked this one to be a, a flocked version instead of a arm difference pose, but still wanted to get them for the actual collection. Next up, we have the new girl, CC Parking. Yeah. New girl Fungal Pop. Yeah, when I say one set, I mean one set. Um, I don't know too much about the new girl character, but I definitely have a problem with, like I said, completing my goals for each con and it's getting each Fungal Pop. Um, the two pops that are missing are the uh, Caroline Fungal Pop and the Supergirl. I gave them two little um, Emma and a Narwhal 
and M's dad uh, earlier today. Uh, she definitely deserved them. Next up, we have the Tokyo Ghoul. I know who this one wanted. Drew's vid, this was his in search of. I can see this maybe going down to him, down the line. This is the Ito, I'm guessing how you say it, version of the New York Comic Con version. If he didn't pick one up, let me know, guys, and we'll get that for him. Next up, we have Brooke from One Piece. This is an animated television show uh, by Funimations. It's a Funko Pop that looks off the charts. Definitely has the, one of the best detailed pops for New York Comic Con. And basically for the year. That thing looks sick. The only thing it's missing is a glow. Do like this one. Just the, just the fact of him having a guitar in his hand, the thing over his shoulder, I forget those are called. He had, I got glasses, hats, hair, and he's a skeleton with some crazy pants. This guy's awesome. The Assassin number 386 from Pop Games Fallout. Definitely will be playing Fallout. Uh, one of my highest viewed videos is actually a Fallout video on a how to do something, which took a very long time. Love this game. Can't wait to pick up the other characters in this line. Not going for all the, uh, the Volt Boys though. Not going for the Volt Boys. I'm not playing that game. As you can hear, I'm exhausted and I still got more to do. Not just this, I have everything so I can leave tomorrow. I'm leaving for a couple weeks. It's not like I'm leaving for a day. We got Baba Louie, Quick Draw McGraw, Hannah Barbera, 281. I actually pulled this in a mystery box that you're going to see down the road. And I gave it to some little kid. Um, shout out to Chrono Toys, um, Callus Collectibles for giving me that mystery box. Top Pops for participating in it with me and uh, doing a video with me doing while we did stuff. I said, hey, this is what I pulled. I gave it to a little kid. Awesome. He did the same thing. It was great. Baba Louie, 281, Quick Draw McGraw. Another Hanna Barbera. We got actually Dum Dum, and on the back here it has Touche Turtle, number 485 animations. I can see this one being a flocked one too. It's flocked them, flock them, flock them, flock them. A big, a big exclusive, definitely for the European market. This is going to be a big one. The Doctor Who Glow in the Dark Vashta Narada gonna be a big one for them they are the one of the biggest buyers of this series is definitely the people in Europe they know everything about Doctor Who I don't know too much about them but I have so many Funko Pops for each series that I can actually say I have a series for each Funko Pop and this one is gonna be on there so we have the Doctor Who one the detail on this with the glow in the dark off the charts if you are a Doctor Who fan highly recommend picking this one up it's pretty freaking cool our first Two pack. We have the Saturday Night Live Budute Brothers. This was my first time getting a Saturday Night Live Funko Pop and it being a two pack and it being a New York Comic Con exclusive makes perfect sense. This is how my collection always grows. I get something from the con. The next thing I want to add to it over and over again. Definitely like it. Pretty sick. First SNL pop. Two pack. If you're a fan, definitely have to pick this one up. I love that they have the beers in the hand. It's something new. I can see them doing more of that in the future. That's pretty cool. And the last two pack in this box, we have the George Glass and Jan Brady. This one is an interesting one because it seems as if they actually had like some kind of pop going on in there. Like they have an insert for him, and I don't know if they were like had like a clear sculpt for him and they couldn't get it done or it's just that like I could have took like a clear sculpt figure which would have been pretty awesome but they came up with this so I'm like ah, I don't know what to say but if you are part of the Brady Brunch uh, line for collectors you're definitely going to need this one because it's the only one missing in the wave and uh, they saved it for this George Glass keeping it with Pop Games we have our another Sora Funko Pop Guardian form not played the game, but I've been collecting all of these figures. Um, I actually like this one a lot. You can see on his, it's like a new skin almost on his entire outfit. I, they could have, but they didn't have to. Would make the Goofy and the Donald back here as the exclusives like they did last year. But didn't have to because they did such a great job on the sculpts and the colors that you made him a common. 
people are going to pick them up and buy them. You can make a lot more of them. Um, they also could have made a lot more figures from Disney from here. Hope they do down the line. I'm a 405, Kingdom of Hearts. I got less, I got maybe like three boxes of Kingdom Hearts stuff um, in storage. I'm, I just keep collecting them and buying them. Not only is it like 11.15 at night, batteries are basically all dying and I'm swiping them back and forth. It's getting a little crazy. I'm exhausted. But I gotta get these videos done because I'll leave. We had the gearhead from Rick and Morty. I know a lot of people have been hating on Rick and Morty lately. If you don't know, they actually signed about 70 episodes. So I think about like six seasons more to go with Rick and Morty. With that being said, even the commons are going to be uh, an investment kind of pop or a collecting kind of pop. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure you pick up your Rick and Morty pops now before it's too late, especially the exclusives. Gearhead looks sick. You can see the translucent with the gears inside of his body, his head, all the colors. Do like it. Come one of my uh, favorite, I could probably say that Rick and Morty becomes another favorite of mine. If you put all the pops together of how unique the characters are in the show, it, it's mind boggling. My first Predator pop, and should have been maybe a Fugitive Toys exclusive, is the Fugitive Predator New York Comic Con exclusive. Heard that. This entire series has been retired already, besides the stuff that's out with FYE and whatever's been sent out already and whatever you can get from the con. Um, I don't know if that's a rumor or what, but that was what I was read and I think I was told that too. Uh, this is a New York Comic Con exclusive Predator one. I, uh, I think this is the best one they can make. He's uh, translucent on his legs and then it goes up through his body and head. I think that thing looks sick. Definitely glad I was able to get this one. Uh, it's probably the only one I'll keep in my collection. Uh, I'm not going to be getting the other other guys in the back here, which is only two. But I heard the movie wasn't too good. It was a bust. And uh, they, they pulled it and they retired it for whatever reason. But this thing looks sick. This thing looks sick. I don't care. It says The Predator. I'm cool with that. Before we get into the next couple series, this one's an individual one. Uh, this is the Mickey, the true original 90 years Mickey. Um, this is the little whirlwind Mickey. I have to get all these Mickey Pops for Punky and I only have this one. And the Nightmare Before Christmas and the Adventure Time. Oh man, I gotta get my work on. Definitely cute, definitely love Mickey. I was gonna get her the Loungefly bag uh, and purse little thing, but I got her the uh, Pikachu one there and definitely got some good news about uh, Funko Pops coming along in the future that a pretty interesting series that we have not really got before. I'm going to share with that a lot of things I learned from the con, so that's why we say it. It's the, new, uh, the 90 year anniversary. He's not on the back, and I think when they re revealed all the Mickey Mouse Pops, I kind of don't like it a little bit because when they reveal it all, we all expect them to be either a common or an exclusive. And then we find out the con exclusive, we're like, oh man. We thought like the PX exclusive when we got the Ranger from, I think it was a Ranger from uh, Solo. I was like, oh, I think it was like a Range Trooper or something like that. Like, oh man, that was supposed to be a PX exclusive. Now it's a con exclusive. I'm, I'm never mad with that. Next series we have is the Harry Potter. Starting out with Hermione with the sorting hat sitting up top. I believe they have another, somebody else with a sorting hat as well. But it was nice to see this one. I always, you always remember the scene of that. Um, Funko's been so involved recently, they could probably even set it up that you can take the hat off and put it on other characters. And I can see that coming within the next, uh, next year or so. And now, with that being said, we have Professor Quillen. New York Comic Con, number 68 in the line, exclusive. If you turn his head around, you can take his hat off and you can see Voldemort in the back. Pretty sick and insane. And you also have the glow in the dark, um, nearly headless Nick. My Harry Potter exclusive collectibles is basically almost complete. I only have a few Harry Potters left and I'm done and they're just exclusives. Big fan of these guys. Definitely happy they add them in the, uh, the collection. And uh, Barnes & Noble keeps dropping them and I keep buying them. I don't know, I think I need to get another one of these. Like I got the Mayas, oh, 
Sick. Probably basically uh, everybody's favorite Hannah Barbera pop. Putting this out here now. I was gonna save it for a little bit later, but let's just get to it. Jabba Jaw. Jabba Jaw, he's jacked up with muscles in the back. Pretty sick. You get the figure on the side there. Definitely has bright colors, beautiful uh, design, and very smiley kind of character for a shark. His fins sit like this, so he can stand up pretty good. He's flexing on you. I love it. I think he's one of the cutest characters that they made for New York Comic Con and for the Hanna-Barbera line. Definitely an out-of-box pop, uh, for me at least, to be able to just keep it on display because he's that kind of cuteness. He's off the charts. Jabba Jaw. Sick. All right, we're gonna start running into some DC stuff. DC stuff, we have the Killer Frost from The Flash, the fastest man alive TV show. This is number 712. It, this is a glow-in-the-dark character. The, uh, the frost, I guess, in her hands lights up and glows in the dark. I know the Funko Pop Academy are huge fans of this show and The Flash, and I've seen that a lot of children, kids, teenage boys, I would say, are obsessed with the Flash. They love the Flash or they love Spider-Man. I don't know what it is. But I, I, it, it was cool too because I was watching Funko Pop Academy's uh, episode on pops that they wanted and before Funko released them, they said they wanted this character here, the Killer Frost character. So I'm glad they were able to uh, finally get one for their collection and uh, actually know the reveal on that one. This pop here is definitely the biggest shocker uh, seeing it in person and this is the Wonder Woman hashtag I am Wonder Woman on the back this box is gold there's gold that goes throughout the entire box it actually has texture throughout the entire box uh, you can see that she's a little fit now you know she got some muscles she's flexing she got her arms up one up one down looking at Floyd Mayweather style it's a little thinner um, I wish she does come with a stand gonna say hope she comes with a stand because the female characters are pretty hard and I like the fact that the DC characters don't have a bobblehead, like the Marvel ones. And on the back here, you have the comic book that she's from. This thing definitely is going to go in a pop protector. Shout out to Chalice Collectibles for all the pop protectors they've sent me. I have so many different ones from them that it's off the charts. I have a video coming with them. But this box, in, in person, alone, is definitely worth the price of admission for $15. Highly suggest for getting one of these. Yeah, this is definitely going in Punky's collection. I'm putting it in there myself, in box. The box is amazing. And then we have the Arthur Curry Aquaman. No idea who this guy was. After somebody said that he was Carl Drago, I was like, no way, no way. New York Comic Con exclusive. I've seen RJ get a signature from this on that best pop from my Legion of Collectors. Great job. And he's uh, two number, 243 in the line. You can see the uh, tattoos and the muscles and the stance and posts he's in. Definitely a badass character. I didn't pick up any of the other Aquaman Man Pops, but I've been picking up all the exclusive DC ones, and I like them. I like them. Even that uh, 245 looks crazy. He's on like a wave. That's sick. like the pose. like the outfit. like the face. Awesome character. Moving on to some Marvel Funko Pops now. We have the comic book. We usually get a comic book character every single Comic-Con. Um, Spider-Woman. Wasn't too familiar with this character, still am not, but like everybody else, we love our Spider-Man. Spider-Man rules it all. And she has a little pose, like a dancing little pose with the red and the yellow on. Pretty cool, pretty sick. My only complaint for the comic book pops that we've been getting every year is I want them to change the back of the boxes. Please, just do that for me. Change back of the boxes. Even if you just put this one character on the back, kept the same colors, totally cool with that. And if you just did it like the beautiful pop that we just got, this one right here, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Putting this together with the comic book on the back, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know if they do not have the rights to do that, but I would love that feature on the back of these comic book uh, characters and any comic book characters that they do in the future. Let me know in your comments what you think about that. Big one for the 10 year anniversary, the first 10 years of Marvel, Black Panther. We have our first Shuri Funko Pop. Um, she's actually not part of the original first line and she is a Comic-Con exclusive. The gold characters definitely look sick, definitely look legit. And if you have 
started collecting at least one of these characters. You're gonna need this one down the road. Definitely part of the first 10 years. She's not, she's like a, uh, she's like Bruce Banner, you can say kind of, you know, she's like important, but she's not important kind of character. Uh, I did like her in the film. Uh, very smart, it's a good film. Great movie, Top Pops, please go watch him. Finally, my first pop from this series, and it's the Carnage. Cletus Cassidy himself, Carnage. He has like these little tentacles that are coming out the side on both hands. I think they're pretty sick. I don't have any other Carnages. Um, I wish they would make, we all say it, this glow in the dark so it can stop look like he's chewing gum. Uh, the insert's pretty interesting. They, they have it coming over the tentacles so that he doesn't bust the actual plastic. I do want to get the Cletus Cassidy one and that's it. I've been pretty smart now. I'm not being a crazy completist as I was of Pops, but that's different. This is, that series, this, it's a con, but this is a series. I don't need to complete the whole series. Uh, I do want to get the Venomized Loki one, and I already have the best Venom one. I got the Carnage ones ready, but this one's pretty sick. I love it. I definitely got me a Cletus Cassidy, baby. I finally ain't Cletus the Hillbilly no more. I'm Cletus Cassidy, y'all. Whose head is this? And the last Marvel that I have in this box is a Koi. She did cancel for New York Comic Con um, and The Walking Dead, but she was a big character that wanted to get signed. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see how this comes off, baby. Let's check it out. We got to do it. I seen somebody actually pick this up and throw a chase figure on it. And out of all the pops to actually do this with, smart enough it is her because she has a bald head. And you can't really mess that up. I love the uh, the thought process on that. Let's see if we get this head off. A little, little tight, a little tight. Oh! For the first time for them attempting this kind of process, I think they hit, nailed it. Same thing with those five star figures. I put the little uh, weapons and accessories into the Harley Quinn one. They fit perfect, no problems, not falling over at all. Uh, my only complaint with all the, the Marvel Pops are the bobblehead, uh, but lucky enough, this one does come with a stand compared to the other ones. Definitely pretty sick, pretty cool. I can see definitely people picking up two of these down the road. Oh man, it's like a little sideshow collectible now. Like a little hot toy. Not bad, not bad. So that was uh, that was what I have out here. I'm gonna go grab some other stuff. Ooh, what's that? Over there. Be right back. All right, firing it back. We got a DC Funko Pop box, two pack. We got the Flash and the Superman. They're actually racing. This box is really thick. And uh, something that I definitely wanted to do last Comic Con with uh, the Flash when he's running. And you have the uh, uh, Superman in his actual pose. I can see these ones definitely being displayed out of the box if uh, you need room and if you really want to get the best feature and uh, out of this two characters here. Because they're running, you can't really see too much. And because uh, Superman is flying, they do take up a lot of box space. And I can see why this would be a Comic-Con exclusive, because how much box shelf it would actually take up. Basically, you know, full full size pops here. This is, this is a thick box, a real thick box, compared to a regular size standard box. Uh, I feel like it's even thicker than a three pack. Pretty solid, uh, and it's only a two pack wide. Another Funko Pop protector that we're gonna need. Shout out to Cal's Collectibles for all their Funko Pop madness. Definitely the best protectors in the business. I remember when I sent um, Jedi Patrol, he was like, whoa, what kind of protector is this? Yeah, that's a Chalice Collectibles. Keeping along DC, we got our boy Superman 3-pack, 80 years. We got basically red, white, and blue characters. They're in that pose. I remember getting down and doing it for the thumbnail when they had to reveal the three pack. It looks actually wider than the other three packs of the Flash. Like, it does look wider, it's 100%, and there's like a little mirror in the back round. I do love when they put inserts inside these boxes. 
pretty interesting, pretty cool. Definitely going to need it if you are picking up any of the three pack series. I have the Flash, I have the Wonder Woman, now I have this. Can't wait to the next one. We need some Aquaman, some Batman. We got to figure that one out. Pretty sick, pretty cool. They could just change the pose. Liking it. I think this is almost finishing up. Almost finishing up our Marvel line. We have our last and final, I believe, going to be the Thor Ragnarok. This is Cork with Meek character. He was actually at New York Comic Con. I seen him take a picture there. He definitely was one of the most interesting characters when it came to that voice that he had. Uh, because of this Thor Ragnarok that keeps showing up, I'm definitely buying that Gladiator Hulk from Hot Toys. Pretty sick. If you guys don't know, I do own up here all the ceramic characters besides the Hulk and that Hella. I have the Target exclusive Hella and I have the uh, Hot Topic exclusive Hulk. But these other ones, I have them. They're pretty sick. Proud to have them in my collection. Um, another story on those. There's only two in the world and I own Funkos, I think. I either own Funkos or I own the manufacturers. Pretty freaking sweet. And now we're one and only but sad but wanting and basically the number one uh, leaked Funko Pop is Captain Rex 501st Clone Trooper he got two guns in his hand looks freaking sick I can't believe I got this one I hope they make a Captain Rex ex exclusive without the helmet if not I'm just going to go through all my Funko Pops find a head put it on him and call it a day I freaking love the Captain Rex uh, character. I can see me picking up more than one of these and maybe play around with the arms. I don't know. This, this thing is something sick and I love it. I love the 501st uh, Legion and just Captain Rex and the Clone Wars. Excellent type of show. Can't wait till the new one starts. Moving along to the, I think it's the skins now for the Reinhardt big character this is the third one we got uh, this was actually a Best Buy exclusive with the no head and then having that glow in the dark body and head on there almost looked like the Iron Man hot toy that was uh, the New York Comic Con exclusive almost color <sighs> pretty freaking sweet this is my first Reinhardt um, every single Comic Con I basically keep all these ones I always get Hanna Barbera stuff DC Marvel Star Wars games like Overwatch Harry Potter you name it, I always get it. And I basically have built my collection based off of all these cons now of Funko Pops. This is the Reinhardt again, number 400 in the series. Big character, big pop. My first Reinhardt character in my thing. I never actually was able to get the Best Buy version. I bought it and gave it to Ray as a gift for helping me out for collecting my mail for an entire training camp. I like it. Moving along here, we have our Bedrick. From Game of Thrones. Oh man, this was definitely an awesome reveal for us. I can see that translucent flame being a glow in the dark. It was pretty sick, man. You can't kill him and he keeps coming back to life. Funko's killing the Game of Thrones series, bringing in all the characters in every possible way. I love it. I, I, I can't say enough about this series. Funko, 10 out of 10 making every single character that we all have fell in love with and then died and then fell in love with or comes back to life every single time. Shout out to you guys, 100%. And the last Game of Thrones one we have is the Creators. We got George R.R. R. Martin, D.B. Wise, and David ben Benioff from the Game of Thrones. You can see them on the back with the wave that they're part of which is uh, maybe edition five or so. Pretty expensive, $45 I believe it was, Barnes Noble exclusive. The box, I've only gotten a box like this one other time. I can't forget, I forget the name of it because it felt like very fragile. And I don't know, let me know if at home, if you guys had the same one, it's like, like it's a fragile box here. Like this thing needs to be in a protector because it will shred, real shred. Game of Thrones fans, put us on your shelf with your other pops. You're gonna have to, man. Just the creators, how dope is that? Love it, love it. Sick individuals, they are sick.
moving back along as we go through all these, uh, you can say grail pops now basically. We have our orange chrome Batman. Yeah, I, from this angle, from where I'm looking at him, it almost looks red. He almost looks red. I can see where that red was. I think Funko should have did a red one. They must have had a theory or a reason in why they did an orange one, maybe for Halloween. It has to be. And they could do the red one next year. I highly suggest uh, if you are picking up the Batman Fungal Pops, you need this one. Oh, I need, I need the damn blue one. I got two of the green ones. Insane, sick. Oh, that one guy selling one. Oh, but it was graded, I think. Oh my lord, I don't even know. We'll see what's going on with that blue one. Oh man. Oh man. I'm gonna see if I get that blue one off some trades and some sales with that with this gentleman from New York Comic Con that I, I know personally. Ugh, he has a booth. I'm just gonna bring this one in. This was uh, actually a signature pop that I brought to New York Comic Con for one reason, and that was to get signed. And this one was signed by Austin St. John the original first Power Ranger that they've ever actually had on the series. I could have got the Steve one, but I wanted the original one. I remember the original Power Rangers. Steve was a little bit later. That's how much Power Rangers I watched. I didn't watch too much, but I remember even dressing up as one, as the Red Ranger one year, Halloween. But I always loved the Power Rangers. I always loved them. Hanging out with him, Walter Jones is pretty cool because it's always nice to see Walter and uh, spit the stuff with him. Competing against him at fun days, always fun. Definitely got a pack, uh, pop stack. Taking it from my collection and bringing it to the con. Whew, that's a big one. And, you know, I waited five minutes to get online. And it was 60 bucks. Can't beat it. Shout out to you. And a surprising one that a lot of people bought, told everybody how much they loved them, and then they flipped them, and that's a disgrace to a lot of uh, collectors like us. So this is a Notorious B.I.G. with the crown. Differences is the jacket. I do like like the, the crown that he has. It's like shiny-ish with the glasses as well. Uh, the difference is the jacket, which, uh, I don't know, man. The Biggie Pops are going to be sick. Definitely interested in getting the entire wave. Uh, this was number 70. No, this one's number 82. And if you look on the back here, it's 77 and 78. I don't know if they went already to the uh, 79, 80, and 81. Or it's going to be the Biggie Fungal Pop. Again, if they have the license for this, and if I was them, I would make as many of these as possible because they're going to look sick on the shelf. I would run a whole thing past here with just Biggie Fungal Pops alone. Notorious B.I.G. For all you guys who said they wanted a Biggie Fungal Pop and then got it and flipped it and waffled it, shame on you completely. And uh, getting into this one here was definitely the biggest stud that all of a sudden basically took off and is valued wise the highest and that's the Funky Phantom 446 Handy Barbera Funko Pop glow in the dark completely glow in the dark reminds me of a I guess a Hanna Barbera holographic Darth Maul maybe I don't know I might have to go right here in the series I don't know I like it Funky Phantom for some reason Sashpedia had like two of these listed and when I first got them I just finger banged the damn thing and uh, I had to take them off. I didn't realize I hit two. Thank you, uh, Funko Boston, for realizing that. And I, I thought there was two different ones. And I don't know why Stash put that up for New York Comic Con. Pretty sick. Funky Phantom. And here's a stand. Yes. Can't beat the stands. You can't beat the stands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before we finish up with the biggest series for New York Comic Con, I'm going to bring in my personal favorites. Yeah. Starting with, whoa. The Toy Story Pizza Planet Truck and Buzz Lightyear. This is definitely one of the best rides besides the Marvin the Martian ride that came out. Surprising ride as well. And I can see in 2019 Funko changing those tires. 
to be able to spin and um, maybe on a display or something because Funko has been killing it in the past three months on their on their pops and their sculpts. It's number 52 in the rides line and it says on top on the rides which is sweet. I do love this one. Uh, the price tag was pretty high on it so I did only get one of them. Glad it's a part of my collection. It's pretty sick with him flying in the air like that. Uh, definitely brings back memories. And now, whew, oh my god, I might have to ask Punky to help me pick this thing up. It is the heaviest fungal pop I've ever picked up, surprisingly, in hand, off the charts. I highly recommend all of you guys. I can't say pick it up over the Pizza Planet truck, you have to get them both. And that is this bad boy. Man, the Hulk Buster versus Hulk. First 10 years Marvel Studios, Marvel mov uh, movie moments. Avengers Age of Ultron. Look at that. They didn't go around and beat around any corners on this. This thing is extremely heavy and it feels as if you're getting a 6 inch Funko Pop and around a 8 inch Funko Pop with the uh, Hulk Buster in there. This thing is pretty heavy and then you gotta add in the base factor. Definitely a crazy scene in the film and they're beating the heck out of each other. Uh, the Hulk Buster. Damn, they could even... I could see them not doing it because they could have their own series and no wave but I could see them not doing that but it's number 394. Um, they don't actually have anything known besides it's called the movie moments on the bottom here. Hulk Buster vs Hulk. This thing is massive like yeah, like, it's taking down my wrist. Definitely sick. You can, they're punching. Highly recommend picking this thing up. And, uh, actually, I didn't see too many with these, too many people with these. So I'm actually going to take this out of the box. Show you guys now. Oh, my God. Wow. It's massive. That is massive. That's crazy. I can see somebody actually breaking these guys off, putting them on individual ones. But this is pretty cool. They got some of these uh, little rocks standing up. His foot's bringing into the ground. Same thing with Hulk here. They got their feet literally going through the ground. Pretty awesome. Uh, they got the bobbleheads on both versions. They got the original. And they got the original sculpt of the Hulk boss. They're bringing it back old school. Definitely a classic film. And even on the Hulk's pants, it has the Avengers logo on there. Oh my lord. Even a better bobble than the first time around. Perfect. Identical identical suit here. Perfect Hulk. It's definitely one of the best movie moments they've ever created. It's a 10 out of 10. This is a literally a subscription box from Marvel Clef to Corpse. Here alone. And you're getting it with the Hulk figure right here. Look at the Hulk's hands. Oh, this thing's sick. Bashing up against each other when they're punching. Highly recommend this thing. Make sure you have one or two people with you. Don't ask your girlfriend to help carry it. Definitely pretty freaking heavy. Now, there is one series that takes over all, I mean all, of all the cons with this one series with these one individuals that go crazy each and every time. The Great Ape Vegeta. This six inch Funko Pop is off the charts. Personally, one of my favorites. Definitely an out of, about, out of the box pop. Uh, they got the new wave on the back too, number 434. And when it comes to these Dragon Ball Z characters, Continuing making new characters and adding characters like this uh, to a series driving all the collectors crazy because they don't know if they want to collect it or to flip it or waffle it because I know that that's what the community is about. To me, you got to collect these things first, guys. Quit trying to go out there and waffling them and selling them. Buy them for yourself. Stop it, please. Keep the community strong. We need more collectors out there and less flippers. Right now, I think the collectors are definitely losing the battle. Please. And these guys here are like, these guys are like the king of it. These Dragon Ball Z collectors because they're in their early 30s. 
and they're right there with the money and it's uh, it's understandable but remember this is your nostalgia here this is your childhood cut it out Dragon Ball Z baby number one Funko Pop line at both San Diego Comic Con you've seen and New York Comic Con um, I'm gonna bring back the other one real quick before we finish this off actually I'm gonna do this first this is the blue chrome Vegeta Toy Tokyo exclusive 2018 I asked die hard collectors what the blue meant and they gave me the only thing it possibly could be is this one little scene that was it and uh, it kind of disappointed me on that I'm very 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 disappointed on that a lot I wish you had a little bit more meaning to the character or gave us a new character instead of the chrome 2018 stuff that we've been getting it's like the year of the 2018 last year was the 8-bit this year is the chrome uh it's um it's the one pop that i actually brought for me to get signed by that voice from from the voice actor and it was simple it was easy for me they're like well when i was talking to victor he was like hey why don't you just get uh the gold chrome i was like wait what about the blue one? Does that have any reasoning? To like, he's like, no, not really. So I was going to get this one signed by him because most people say you shouldn't get it signed by the dubbed character. It's supposed to get signed by the Japanese version, blah, 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 blah. So I would going to get this one signed by him. You could even get the Great Ape Vegeta as well, or any of Vegeta's. But I wish this had a little bit more reasoning around the madness. Or if, if you made him red, I bet you all of the collectors would have went crazy because he looked like he was on fire and he's ready to do one of them crazy moves that he does yeah and we're gonna bring it back to where we started this all the Majin Vegeta one Funko Pop that basically ruled the entire community because you were able to get raffles you were able to wait online you can be able to get not one but two of these in your collection uh, compared to being able to get the Funky Phantom. If you can't get them uh, from the Funko booth, if you weren't able to touch it, boom, that was it. But this one here, this one pop, definitely took over the entire community. I'm glad and happy that the people who did take part of this as a collector were able to take it and collect it and keep it in their collection. This for me is definitely going on my shelf with all my signed signatures. Ah. I can, he has a great signature as well. Getting it as a gift too from the over 9,000 booth. Them getting a pop exclusive instead of Funimations. I'm loving it. Heard this might not even possibly go online. Keeping it more rare. And if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I was able to get that signature on there. The Majin Vegeta. Over 9,000 exclusive sticker. Again, people, this thing was selling for like $260 or so insane off the membrane um, as I mentioned before the only pops that you're missing is both most likely the ones I gave away I did not get a metallic beast boy and I never got the children of the forest HBO exclusive I see one for sale at the con for 170 bucks but I'm a new man I'm a new man I don't have to live with every single Funko Pop in my collection as much as I used to as much as I used to I do love completing a series that I already started which is tough but I just don't need more pops that I can't display and it's very hard for me personally and that's why I started moving on to a little bit of a hot toy thing because I can display just one really expensive thing instead of 15 of one it, it's, it's so hard it's so hard but I love my Funko Pops. I own over almost 25 and change now. Over 2,500 and change. If you add up everything in my collection, maybe 2,600 Funko Pops. It's unreal. I love them. I take care of them. Uh, you guys can see how I take care of my Pops. From them being in a storage facility inside a protector inside of a box all labeled all numbered I have a complete addiction obsession with these things 
Um, I always feel good when I'm able to get like a lot like this, especially the con exclusives. Every single time, I can't help it. I can't help it. I know some of you guys get mad about it. The majority of you guys actually get mad about it for some reason. Thumbs down the video. I can't help it. I can't help it at all. And I will say one last thing, and I'm going to end this video here. Basically, a 45 minute hour video of me just mumbling on, talking about stuff. You can see how tired I am. Three days of Comic Cons and training camp. I leave in the morning. Remember, I seen two items sold out on Pop Culture. And I was only on Pop Culture to see a price for one of the items I picked up that was a hot toy. So that's why I'm on Pop Culture. Can't believe I have to explain that to some people. One was the Great Ape Vegeta, and this Mickey, the true original vinyls figures. I don't know what about these things, but they are lovable, and I like them. Punky said she wanted them right away. They're definitely gonna go to her, and they have like a soft cloth um, inside insert, and they look amazing. I really like these and I can see myself picking up more of these for Punky down the road. I had to pick these up or little mystery minis. I'd rather pay the a little extra price for these because uh, these things are sick, man. These things are pretty cool. I don't know what the actual regular price tag is for these. Let me know. Uh, let me know if they always come as two pack or if they come individually. Definitely enjoyed this. Uh, this guy right here, a little secret right there, man. These things sold out on pop culture. Definitely can see why. Hope you guys enjoyed my review of me doing basically show and tell with you guys and explaining my Funko Pops that I was able to pick up. I do want to do more reviews of the entire New York Comic Con wave and series this whole week, but I'm literally leaving to go fight on ESPN Plus in just a, uh, a little bit more than a month. So I got a lot of training going, a lot of fighting, a lot of taking care of my body and making sure that I'm healthy enough to get back in the ring. Ham out. Boom. Holy hell. Wow. I gotta put everything together and pack everything up. Yeah. Camera sideways, but I got one more thing. I got this little action figure. Mr. Freeze, his name was. RJ, you were right. Mr. Freeze, his name was. Ice mode, five and a half inch action figure. It's kind of a token. Um, it is a Funko exclusive. It's a Primal Age version. The only thing I can say, and we kind of been spoiled with, is if you open it up, it kind of ruins the box, and we can't live that life as collectors. Ah. I lied. I found an Ant Man, as well. I mean, uh, Adam Bomb on the floor as well. I think this was it. I also, if you guys didn't see, picked this up Lounge Fly, Pikachu Pack, Full Punky. Oh, it smells so good. I got this at the uh, Lounge Fly on the last day there. Love it. It was about 60 bucks, 65 bucks. Enjoyed it. Adam Bomb Metallic, only one I got uh, from them. Uh, again, I did not get the Beast Boy. I think that is it. See ya. It's 2.30 in the morning, still cleaning up, found more stuff, the Shining, two pack, first time I think it was a two pack of the actual rock candy, looks pretty sick, pretty cool, I'm scared death of this, that's all punky, yeah. Um, I'm gonna bring back the other one real quick before we finish this off.
Actually, I go back to the original. Actually, I'm going to bring this one back.